absolute value graphing form with transformations looks like this. Y is equal to A, absolute value X minus H, plus K. A represents several things. If the absolute value of A is greater than 1, you have a vertical stretch. If the absolute value of A is less than 1, you have a vertical shrink. If A is less than 0, then you have a reflection about the x-axis. H represents the horizontal shift. If H is greater than 0, you move to the right. If H is less than 0, you move to the left. The tricky thing is to remember that this minus has to be there in order for H to be positive. But if there's a plus here, that means H had to be negative in order to create a minus negative, which becomes plus. The vertical shift is very straightforward. We go up if k is positive and down if k is negative. H, k, your horizontal shift and your vertical shift give you the location of your vertex, the point where these two lines meet. Once you've graphed your vertex, a and negative a represent the slopes of the two lines that make up the graph. So your slope, is equal to a. So the slope of the line to the right of the vertex is a, and the slope of the line to the left of the vertex is negative a. So once our absolute value function is in graphing form, we can simply use the vertex and a and negative a to create the graph. Unfortunately, it's not always given to us in graphing form, as you can see for our first example. So algebraically, rearrange each absolute value function to be in graphing form. Then identify its vertex, of course, its transformations from the parent graph, and graph the function. Then write the domain and range in interval notation. What is the problem with our first example? x has a coefficient. The coefficient of x needs to be 1 in order for the function to be in graphing form. So how do I get rid of this negative 3? The absolute value of a product can be the product of each term absolute value, meaning I can rewrite the absolute value of negative 3x as absolute value negative 3 times absolute value x. This property allows us to take numbers out of the absolute value once we've properly factored them. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, so now negative 2 should multiply by 3. Negative 6 absolute value x minus 1. Let's look at our transformations. a is negative 6, h is 0, since x is not subtracting anything, and k is negative 1. a being negative 6 tells us two things. We have a vertical stretch because 6 is greater than 1, and we say that as vertical stretch by a factor of 6 because a stretch is not adding 6, it's multiplying by 6 because a stretch is like a dilation. The other thing that a tells me is that because a is less than 0, we have a reflection about the x-axis. h equals 0 means no horizontal shift, and k equals negative 1 means we'll vertically shift down 1. Our vertex is 0, negative 1 because it is h comma k. So I go to 0, negative 1. Because a is negative 6, the slope of my line to the right will be down 6 and over 1. My slope for the line to the left will be and over 1. The domain for absolute value functions is negative infinity to infinity. Even with any amount of transformations, you'll have negative infinity to infinity. But the range values are restricted. In this case, our range starts at negative infinity, right? We always go least to greatest, and ends at the highest y value being used, which is the y value of the vertex. Because that's part of the vertex, we're going to use a bracket. Example two, begin by algebraically rearranging. How would I do this when what's inside of the absolute value is now a group rather than a product? That means I need to factor out the coefficient of x, no matter what number I have here. If I factor out a 2, that means dividing each of these terms by 2. So I have x plus 2. Remember the property before where you can rewrite the absolute value of a product as the product of two absolute values? 
Now evaluate the absolute value of 2. Oh, that's just 2. Our transformations are as follows. A is a positive 6. H, it's tempting to say that H is positive 2, but H is actually negative 2. Because if I were to rewrite this group as X minus, and I would have to make it equivalent, X minus what is the same as X plus 2? Well, that would be X minus negative 2 is the same as X plus 2. Therefore, because our graphing form has a minus in it, H is actually negative. And K is positive 2. Remember, H is the kind of tricky one. K is really straightforward. This means our vertex is negative 2, positive 2. Let's determine the transformations. When A equals 6, that means we have a vertical stretch of 6. Because A is positive, we do not have a reflection about the x-axis. But we do have a horizontal shift left 2 because H is negative and up 2 because K is positive. Plot a point at the vertex. My slope to the right is positive A, so I'm going to go up 6 and to the right one. My slope to the left of the vertex is negative A, so up 6 and to the left one. The domain for an absolute value function is always negative infinity to infinity, but the range depends on the vertex. The least y value of the range is 2, and then it goes all the way up to infinity. The y value of the vertex will always be included. It just is either going to be the smallest y value, or in the case of example 1, it's the largest y value. Let's try another one. Factor out the coefficient of x. When you factor out a 3, you're dividing each term by 3. When you divide 1 over 2 by 3, that is the same as multiplying it by 1 third. Continue simplifying. Let's determine A, H, and K to get your transformations. In this case, it's x minus h, so h is simply 1 over 6. And because we have no value being added out here, k, our vertical shift, is 0. Go ahead and pause the video and write out the transformations and the graph yourself. Then determine the domain and range, and then press play to check your work. All right, there's our graph. Let's begin by factoring out the 3. Remember that factoring means dividing, so we're dividing this by 3, which means multiplying it by 1 third. Some of you may be wondering, can we just use decimals? I would like you to be comfortable using fractions because you will not be allowed to use a calculator. So in this case, A is 9, H is positive 13 over 12, and K is negative 15 over 4. That makes our vertex 13 over 12, comma, negative 15 over 4. Let's determine our transformations, domain and range, and graph the function. Thirteen over twelve is just a little bigger than one. Negative fifteen divide four is almost negative four, right? That's negative sixteen over four is negative four, so it's almost negative four. So a little over one, and almost negative four. And our range is from the lowest y value up into the highest, so negative fifteen over four up to positive infinity. When writing transformations for absolute value functions, remember that graphing form. We're going to perform various algebraic operations to create the transformations described. Let f of x equal absolute value x plus 3 plus 1. Write a function g whose graph is a translation 3 units down of the graph of f. So g of x is going to take the f graph 
and translate it three units down. Three units down is a vertical shift. That's always the number that's being added or subtracted out here. So we're going to take the function of f of x and we're going to subtract three from it to move it three units down. Now substitute f of x and simplify. To move f of x three units down, the graph will be represented by this function. Write a function h whose graph is a translation two units to the left of f. This is not the same as a vertical transformation because a vertical transformation is the number being added or subtracted outside of the absolute value. But a horizontal translation is a number being added or subtracted inside that function, which is absolute value in this case. To write that, we'll say f of x to go two units to the left, we will add two. This is because when we are adding to the x, that signals a negative h value, which moves to the left. When we're subtracting from the x, that's a positive h value. So now it's time to add two to the input of the f of x function. You can always check by asking yourself, if I'm adding three, that means I'm going to the left three. So if I wanna go two more units to the left, I'm going to need to add five. Using the same absolute value function, let's write a function whose graph is the reflection in the x-axis of the graph of f. A reflection in the x-axis means to change the signs of all y values or all outputs. So k of x will equal f of x except the negative version. Simplify by distributing the negative. And you have your answer. For a reflection in the y-axis, that means you change the signs of the input, not the output. This technically is the answer, but if they asked you to put it into graphing form, you would factor out this negative one. And your simplified version would be j of x equals x minus three absolute value plus one. Write a function g whose graph is a horizontal shrink of the graph of f by a factor of one Third, notice that a horizontal squeeze or a horizontal shrink occurs when b is greater than one and a stretch occurs if b is less than one. But if a horizontal shrink occurs when b is greater than one, that means a shrink of one third means b has to equal three. If you shrunk by one fourth, b would equal four. If you stretched by a factor of three, then b would be a fraction. So for horizontal stretch and shrink, this is probably the trickiest one. You have to use the reciprocal of the factor given to get the desired shrink or stretch. So x, the input, should be multiplied by three. And in graphing form, you can factor out that three and get this. Write a function h whose graph is a vertical stretch of the graph of f by a factor of two. Just like the reflection was multiplying everything, all your outputs by negative, a stretch or shrink vertically is just multiplying everything by that factor. Much simpler than a horizontal stretch or shrink. So h of x is going to equal f of x times two. Distribute the two. And there is your equation.